Hello, and thank you. This is the Cross Network Behind the Scenes in Media. I'm your host, Tom Gabriel. Co-host is Charles Espedito. I didn't say that right, I'm sorry. That's right. And our beautiful guest we have today is Linda Leake. And uh, I'd like to start out today with reading a little bit of a chapter, not a whole chapter, but a verse from a chapter. It's Proverbs 15, 27. He who is greedy for gain troubles his house, but he who hates bribes will live. So let that marinate as we start our show today with Linda. Linda, thanks for coming. Thank you for having me, Tom and Charles. Thank I you, appreciate Linda. it so very much. And what a lovely set. It is, I'm isn't it? very yes. comfortable here. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. Well, we were on your show just a few days ago, and we enjoyed Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Thank and you for coming. It was great. What a great time we had. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. I'm going to kind of turn the show over to you. Tell us your testimony about a little bit of your background, your upbringing, what kind of uh, hoops you brought, you went through, what you're doing now, and kind of your goals for the future. All right. Oh, boy. Let's see if I can. <laughs> I asked it all at once. I know you're a professional and you're used to uh, interviews. So. Well, I appreciate all of that trust you have in me, Tom. I do. <laughs> well, first of all, I am Linda Leak, and I thank you both for having me here. Whenever there's an opportunity to have a voice, boy, can I talk. No one. I always knew growing up I was supposed to talk. There you go. <laughs> so here we go. Um, but yes, I um, was born and raised in Chicago. Hmm. And uh, so my mother was from from Chicago. Oh yeah. Nice. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, Windy City. Mm -hmm. So as we all know, we don't want to stay there. When you get old and smart enough, you you get out. <laughs> so fortunately, I was brought out by an opportunity with my company right out of college, and uh, they offered a promotion for me to come to California and run an entire territory. So. That's how I ended out west. And nice. Of course, I cried and cried because I was such a homegirl. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to leave my family. My family meant everything to me. And that was of the utmost importance. Right. And, uh, but I had to end up going because I, I thought, wow, what would happen if I don't take this opportunity? And then I'll always think, what if? Mm -hmm. So um, my, my, one of my managers said, are you crazy? I've been trying to get out on the coast for years, and you're, like, turning us down? And they said, well, look, why don't you just go? Because my numbers were so great. I was in sales. And they said, well, why don't you just go and try it out for a couple months, commute, see mm -hmm. if you like it, you know? And as soon as I got on that plane and got out, off the plane, and it was October when I left, so, you know, the mm -hmm. leisure turning and it's getting cool and you got cold nights going on right. and I got uh, in that field in the car and opened my sunroof <laughs> right there in the airport parking lot in the middle of October and said to myself I'm home <laughs> but what's really interesting and God is allowing me to have this opportunity right now to remember my purpose and the fact that I wasn't just invited out to California, but I was called. Hmm. I was mm -hmm. called. And I knew I was called. I had little bits of knowing, for lack of better words, mm -hmm. during that period of trying to decide whether to come or not. Mm -hmm. And my mother had just passed. And I feel that she had an awful lot to do with this. Uh, mm. But that's when I was given the inspiration and the guidance. Um, and I believe that she had a lot to do because she knew that I had a purpose also. And um, so all of the angels and everybody worked together to get me out here. Mm -hmm. And so here I am decades later actually fulfilling the purpose. Mm -hmm. um, so that's basically uh, it in a nutshell. We also had a conversation, you and I, uh -huh. hey. um, about... Um, this was in the green room about when you were a child and the things you used to do as a child. Right. So I always knew that I was always close to God like you. And I came out of the womb knowing that I had a purpose, knowing that God the Father was real. Beautiful. And um, doing things like at eight years old, going on a fast, putting wow. myself on a fast. 
at wow. eight years old. Wow, beautiful. Wow. And I remember, amazing. it's pretty amazing how when I, in retrospect, these are things you didn't think about as a kid. Wow. When you look back, you go, um, wow, <laughs> you know. And um, asking the religion teachers in first grade questions that they couldn't answer. Mm -hmm about the universe and infinity and what is God and who is God mm -hmm. and, and, and remembering that all I wanted to do was just get back to God. Um, so I have really spent my entire life never forgetting that I had a purpose and that purpose is to do my assignment here on earth Beautiful. so that I can return to the maker because that is real. And uh, it's wow. such an honor to be able to have that realization. I didn't come to that by myself. I've had some wonderful teachers who have brought me to that realization that God is real and remembering who I am as a spirit and my purpose. So Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. And so you came out here in, for sales. I came out for sales. What, what kind of sales were you into? I worked for Johnson Products Company. Really? So I wow. sales and marketing. I did that in college. I had three jobs during college at an ad agency and did Kelly Girl. I was a little usherette at the concerts and the ball games. And really? So I worked my way through college having a few jobs, all it simultaneously. <laughs> and when I came out, I got a, I kept the job at the advertising agency. Um, and then I dropped everything and went to Johnson Products Company. Wow. And so I worked there for a year, and the Midwest was my territory. So I had to drive. I was terrified. Two hour drive to Milwaukee. Oh my God, you know. And then once you do it once, you know, <laughs> there's never a problem. So um, I did that. And, uh, and after a year, they said, okay, time to become district manager. <laughs> wow. At 21 years old. Wow. So I came out here, and I was in charge of 40-year-olds in really? Northern California and Southern California. And I had to travel back and forth, and, and at 21 years old, be in charge of, of people twice my age. And, um, wow, what an amazing, amazing uh, opportunity. Yeah, it was great. It was great. It was very challenging, and uh, I worked with a very challenging uh, manager who was above me. So, um, but it was, it was a great experience, so, what yeah. What was your major in college? Marketing. In marketing. Marketing, yeah, okay. absolutely. And speaking <coughs> of college, I still maintain <coughs> the God background, the Christ hood, because I joined a club called the Newman Club, which was a Christian-based um, organization. So I still, <laughs> even in college, the, the, the attunement, the, uh, the calling, just, you know, having to stay close to God. My mom, I'm a, really a PK because my really? mom is, was a minister, and uh, she got a calling while she was sitting under the, the hair dryer. And uh, wow. uh, God told her that it was time for her to serve. So she went to Northwestern School of Divinity. And, really? Uh, Wow. She got her degree in divinity, and they gave her a church and a parsonage, and she ran that for several years before she passed away. Wow. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So. Wow. Yeah. That is awesome. Really awesome. Yeah. Wow. wow. So she established that. And uh, so, you know, God has always been the first and the foremost. So we'll fast forward a little bit. And my corporate career was out here. And so uh, Hallmark cards I worked with, I worked with Duracell batteries. So it was always, but I, I really just always knew what I wanted to do. I always wanted to go into marketing. But most companies would always tell you, well, you have to do sales first before you can go into marketing. You know, you get a little. So I kept getting caught up in sales and never really getting to the marketing aspect. So what's so wonderful is that Everything that I've always wanted, God has given me the opportunity to bring it all together now in terms of what I'm doing now. Wow, beautiful. Yeah. So I've been able to take, and I, and, and I presume I needed the experience mm -hmm. to be able to 
serve people by way of my marketing background. Mm -hmm. So what I've been able to do now is take all these corporate um, experiences, build them up, learn, and recognize how to operate and function within the world, you know, what makes people tick, what they don't like, how do you read numbers, how do you advertise. And so it started out with the advertising in college and that experience and then the sales experience. And it's just awesome when I look back at the picture and go, oh, now I get it. You know, I needed this piece and this piece and this piece to bring me to the point where now, and, and also I failed to mention I had my own business. I had a pay phone company. Really? For several wow. years. Wow. Because I knew, I was just like, okay, I can't do corporate anymore. I can't. So I started seeking, okay, what can I do? What can I do? I need my own thing. And um, I maintained a pay phone business for about five years. And then when the cell phones mm -hmm. came into play, I went, okay. All right, time to go back to work. I remember dropping my head on the desk trying to pay my bills. <laughs> I'm like, oh, no, I got to go back to work again. So I, I, I actually promised myself, okay, you're only going to take this job for, you know, a few months, just long enough to pay off these darn pay phone bills, get caught back up again, and then you're going to find a new business. And I was in that particular uh, arena for about 15 years, <laughs> and that's uh, pharmaceutical sales. So really? that's been the bulk of my um, Boy, I just gave my whole resume here, didn't I? Wow. <laughs> Pharmaceutical sales. That's Those... been the bulk of my, nice. uh, of my experience and, you know, working with physicians. And because, again, that need to help people, uh, it, the, there had to be a purpose there somewhere. And so, so, so the beauty of it, okay, bringing it all together, learning how to work autonomously, learning all aspects of sales and marketing. And my, my minor was communications. So I've worked in television studios um, coming through college. I actually ran my own studio in high school because I went to an alternative school. So mm -hmm. I ran, uh, the teacher gave me a scholarship, go run the studio, you do this well. So again, you know, it all comes together. And it's amazing how you just think your life is like this, but how it's so synergistic and God just lays it out there for you and just pulls it, right. gracefully pulls it all together for you. Yeah, so, so that's, and that's how I no. got to where I am now. Um, so, so you work for some big names too, right? So you yeah. have a lot of connections. And uh, how did all that come about, These, uh, the namers that you work with? Was it through your radio? Was it through your... Oh, you mean the, the, the corporations? Yeah, and the names you work with, some of the names that you worked with in the past and well, celebrities. Well, the celebrities didn't come into play until I decided, uh, okay, now I'm kind of bored with just structured companies. Mm -hmm. uh, I need a little flavor. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's when I reached back into my, uh, my minor, which was communications, okay. and said, I want to start producing. Now, how can I do that? Mm -hmm. And so I started looking around, and then there was an opening with the radio uh, show. Mm -hmm. So I got on to the radio show after about two or three. You're supposed to go through this long program, but after, they put me on twice and it went, you're going live. <laughs> so they put me on live and before I knew it, I had my own show. Wow. And it was nice. a one hour show. Um, again, I needed a platform. I needed a purpose. And I, at that time, the economy began to sag. Mm. So I thought to myself, well, um, I thought to myself, well, why not just uh, help people by way of this crazy economy? So mm -hmm. put together a business show. Help people help themselves by making a little extra money. Nice. So I entitled it Variety Talk because I didn't want to get <laughs> stuck inside the business networking show or anything like that. I wanted to leave it open in case I decided to change it a little bit. And so that's what I did. And um, I did that for about four years, and it was, went so well, one of the producers that came on from one of the major networks said, wow, what a great idea. We want to offer you 40 episodes. And so that's how the idea went from radio to television. Mm. And so from that point, it was on. And uh, so 
we sort of switched on over to television and the idea grew from one network <coughs> to five mm. and then I thought well what's wrong with ha putting together because you're still helping small businesses you're helping them grow their business so you've got the advertising background so put together a little advertising marketing uh, program for small businesses because one of the problems that we're having in the economy is that they would love to advertise in order to be successful you have to separate yourself from the others so those who choose to come on the show will have that opportunity and um, you know let's give them an opportunity of the greatest amount of exposure we can give them by way of not just one channel but let's give them five channels <laughs> you know and in sales it's a numbers game so the more numbers the more people that I can expose these local businesses to the better their chances are for growth and the other thing is why not pull together a co-oping situation where everybody works synergistically to buy and sell from one another as opposed to going to the bigger outlets but let's keep the small business people going that's what makes this whole country stable that's what right. it's built on so let's continue to support one another by having a great in infrastructure infrastructure I hope I'm saying that right um, but uh, a cohesiveness how about we write that word out and say cohesiveness right. um, with one another to really have sincerity and really help one another build our business so that's how variety talk is born that's what I'm doing now beautiful and nice. I've since that time incorporated a spiritual program as a spin-off to variety talk and we don't, probably don't have much time for the story that's another story for another time. okay uh, but I was I had a calling to do a spiritual show as well nice and that's why I respect both of you for what you're doing here today well, thank because you. ultimately I think that that's really the bottom line is spiritually getting people connected right back to God awesome now do me a favor and uh, look at your camera and there's a lady out there say just like you back in the past and she needs that extra incentive to go out there and uh, fight through all the adversity that might be keeping her down and saying, yeah, you can't do it. What, what kept you up there? Tell those people that might be watching that can use that encouragement. Well, I think I have to give the credit again to my spiritual instructors, uh, my spiritual teachers um, who actually instilled in me the real personage of hope. I was given um, hope. And you know hope is a living being. Did you know that? Hope is a living being. And, and faith, just like faith is a living being. And that was instilled in me. And so it's not just a concept, but it's something that I know is a reality. And um, I know for a fact with anything in life, if you continue to work at anything, you're going to make it. All you have to do is just see your goal, just picture it, and then see yourself at the place you want to be. And then you begin to take the steps from there. So you just don't give up. That, to simplify it, don't give up. Nice. Nicely said. Nicely said. Awesome. Uh, Charles, you got a few uh, words? I just want to know, where would you like to see yourself, say, maybe three or five years from now? What is your goals? My short-term, long-term goals, uh -huh. um, I really want to see both of these shows be everything that they possibly can be. Mm -hmm. and, and in my opinion, success is equivalent to each and every person that comes on the show being successful. Mm -hmm. Because if they're not successful, I'm not successful. That's my purpose, is, is honestly, to make sure they get what they're supposed to get out of this. Beautiful. Why don't you give them a, a way to contact you? My number is, um, the best way you can reach me is uh, probably just email me right now. There you go. Email me, L-I-N-D-A. L-E-A-K, uh, the letter 
um, P as in Paul, excuse me, the number 58P at Gmail. So Linda Leak 58P at gmail.com. And just email me, let me know who you are, give, give our staff your number, your information, and we will contact you if you're interested in coming on the show, being a part of the spiritual aspect. And where can they tune in, I'm sorry, to, to view you? Um, you can go on to Channel 32, uh, locally charter in Pasadena, and check out our Arroyo channel. It is happening. And also Channel 99, which is ATTU verse. Either one are fine. And ultimately, within the next few months, you'll be able to have an option of about three more channels. Beautiful. Beautiful. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it. And we're going to come back. Okay. And uh, probably in a couple weeks. Okay. And bring you back on and shoot some bullet points to you. Wonderful. And find out some more about you. I'm going to close up here with another couple of verses here. And I'll start on with the one I just read okay. earlier. And that was uh, Proverbs uh, 15, 27. And I'll read uh, 29 too. It says, uh, he who is greedy, or he who is greedy for gain, troubles his house. But he who hates bribes will live. Hmm. And in this industry, there's a lot of bribing. Hmm. You know, and I've seen a lot of people who take the bribes, and hmm. they, they actually fail. I mean, you know, sure it hurts us all, but hmm. overall, you know, it's, it's a sad situation. Yes. You know, it's better to, to live by the book than to I stray agree. from it, you know? I agree. And... Uh, the next one is, is uh, 29. It says, the Lord is far from the, from the wicked, but he hears the prayers of the righteous. Mm. So, you know, our, our, our righteousness is as filthy rags. Mm. But in Christ Jesus, we're reborn. Yes. You know, and yes. uh, salvation brings us uh, close to what, mm. what he is. So. It's, it's always exciting talking about the Bible, talking right. about the ministry, Thank you for having me on, and I can't wait to come back and talk about this because it's, it's, it's so simple what God gives us to do, his instructions. Right. It might be difficult to live them, but it's really pretty simple what he's asking us to do. Exactly, mm -hmm. yes. And just what you read, mm -hmm. you know, he's, he's going to stick with you if you're righteous, but he may not be so close if you're wicked. Right. You know, um, right. uh, but he's always there for you, okay? And right. you just, ch just change your ways. And, and, and so it's so wonderful he's, to he's know. He's full of mercy and grace and yeah. compassion, right? Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. and, 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 and the best part about the struggles and the challenges is the fact that it brings us all closer to him. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. It really does. All right, well, thank you very much for j joining us at the Behind the Scenes of Media. Next week, we've got a surprise for you. And tune in and stay tuned. Thank you very much.